this school committee meeting to order at 6.09 on Monday the 12th. Um, we'll, we're supposed to do a roll call members here. Bob Halla. Yes. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Katie Edwards. Um, this meeting is being recorded, so everybody should know that. Um, so I'm the chair and I'm presiding over a public hearing today. Once the hearing is commenced, there's no motions or votes um, until the hearing has officially concluded. The purpose of the hearing is to invite comments from the members of the public regarding to the FY19 proposed budget, which we have copies of right here for, for people who are interested. Um, the committee would welcome comments from anybody, but there's nobody here to comment, so, uh, well, it's always here to comment, but it's not here discussion. to comment. <laughs> um, so we will close, take a motion to open the meeting and a motion to close the meeting. Make a motion to open the meeting at 611. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think we should just give a brief overview. Okay. So good evening. We are presenting a fiscal year 19 budget in the amount of $1,681,259 town appropriated dollars. This is an increase from this year, the year 2017-18, of $41,003, or a 2.5% increase. This amount reflects the amount required from town appropriation. An additional $444,951 will be fueled, funded by other grant and revolving account sources. This brings the total operating budget of the Waitley Elementary School to $2,126,210 in the fiscal year of 2019. Um, so unless there's any other questions or comments from the public, from the public. thank you for coming. Make a closing. Um, Making a close to public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six twelve. So that closes our hearing at six twelve. Thank you. Okay. So we'll now open the call to order the school committee meeting, Waitley March 12th school committee meeting at 613. Um, the first order of business is to review and approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes from uh, May, uh, excuse me, May, February 5th. All in favor? Aye. Um, any comments or? Okay. Next up, the financial statement and warrants. Oh, first I want to apologize because I thought I sent this out Friday and then Sunday. I'm like, did I ever email that? And then when I went to look for it in my, we, we just switched over to the new computer. So it, it I don't know where, I know I saved <laughs> it, but I don't know where it went. So then I had to come in first thing this morning, so I apologize that you didn't get it earlier. Um, and I will make sure that that doesn't happen again in the future. But um, quickly glancing through it, um, I did, there was nothing that stood out glaringly to me that's changed since the last time I gave you our update. Um, and you do have warrants tonight to sign. Uh, there are six of them totaling 45,657.38. Can I ask a question about the financial thing? I mean, the financial, not financial, but yeah. Oh, let's say I ran this wrong. Yeah, I, I I'm looking at the think there's a problem. <laughs> there is a problem yeah. with it. Okay, it looks so, like the encumbrances yeah. are totally. Yeah. This is what this is this is what happened. Okay, so, and 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 uh, if I had my yellow fold, my yellow folder, I did run it, and I, and and then I ran it this morning, not thinking. Okay, so. Every month, I manually calculate the 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 encumbered payroll. Mm -hmm. One of them, I accidentally put the wrong date in when I closed the purchase order. So now I'm supposed to run the report from the February date 
all the way through to June 30th or that other mistaken date doesn't get corrected. Mm -hmm. So I will send you a new report in the morning. I can, I can actually run it right now. I have to run it from 2 1 to 6 30, and then it will be corrected. Because I just looked at myself and I'm like, why are all these negatives? And it says that we're yeah, way over. One. I was a little I'm looking nervous. At the first one, I'm looking at the second one, they were super tentative. The bottom line, I'm like, ah! And, I'm just, and I was just like looking really quick, and I was like, okay. So, no, I will run you a new one and email okay. it to you right now. So, it has to do with the income or the, the salaries. Uh, there was an okay. error closing one of the okay, one, okay, one month, so. and so I need to do that. And this will be a good check to see if I can get in under the new we'll put a big X on it yeah Ch just throw them away I apologize Recycle. Yeah. yes okay so Patty will send a new one in the morning I'm going to do it right now can you put it in here or you'll just send it to their you you could, I, I don't know I don't think it's going to pop up on your screen. I think they're, I think which which printers pop up is really building specific. You'd have to send it to Pete. Well, I thought that's you can right. email it to me, and then I can send it. Oh, okay. We can do that. Okay. Well, why don't? I we mean, unless there's, I'll make I'd a rather give you unless, unless there's something drastically that we need to know about. Right. It can, it can probably wait right. until next month instead of printing a lot of paper. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that's my yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Well. Okay, so why don't we do this? I will reprint it. I will look at it, and if I see anything, I will send out a new copy. If I see nothing glaring out at us, I will hold it off till March, uh, April, because April. this is March. Yeah. This is March, right? But it, again, well, you can I send a copy. Just, I think we, right. we don't really yeah. need to discuss yeah. it tonight, yeah. or okay. there's an issue. I apologize. And we can look at it on our, you know, on our email. I refer to it every day. Yeah, I think it's good so to it's have a copy. Okay. So we'll move on to public comment. Anybody have public comment? I don't think so. No one likes us. No. Come visit. We like having public. Um, so we'll move on to the unfinished business. No, I think it's telephone Okay. So we're on to the budget, the proposed budget, which is the topic of the main topic of the unfinished business. There's been no changes as far as no. So you what you so would let Patty. so yes, you would need um, someone to make a motion to um, to adopt the fiscal 19 budget in the amount of one million six eighty one two hundred and fifty nine dollars, uh, an increase of two point five percent as presented in the public hearing. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Any other discussion? Uh, Before we I, even I vote don't, on it? I mean, I think it's all laid yeah. out pretty well. I think the meeting went I just, fairly well. I haven't heard any other feedback to date, but um, I think it all is supportive. Some good arguments, and will hopefully help the school continue to improve. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All in favor? Good job. Okay. So we have a budget for next year. Well, we gotta I get do like town the meeting. Huh? <laughs> we gotta yeah. get through town meeting. We have a proposed we'll, budget. We'll be fine at town meeting. Yeah. I mean, well, we will. It's be. easy to support yeah, what I mean, we're asking for yeah. at this point. Not easy, but we can. Um, I like the idea of the, just FYI, the budget for the cafeteria going forward. I think yes. that will be really helpful. So, um, so that's sort of separate from this, but. Along with the Deerfield School Committee meeting, Mary and I, our meeting to get all our financials to do our big presentation for the April meeting. Okay. Keeps skipping, like Mary I'm won't be in up. tomorrow because mm -hmm. she doesn't work on snow days. So we were supposed to be doing you the three little elementaries tomorrow, and then Thursday we were going to focus on the, uh, Deerfield and and, and Frontier. Mm -hmm. So once again, our meeting got canceled. Mm -hmm. So we are proposing. Uh, so we will be doing a presentation in totality at the April 5th meeting about everything that was moving in the right direction and then when we break down we will have separate reports for each of the schools as to where we are right. and even though our general ledger budget is funding the salaries when we look at the 
uh, the profit and loss that we're going to be showing you, mm -hmm. we look at that as income mm -hmm. because we still have to report it to DESE as if it's a self-sufficient fund. Mm -hmm. So it'll look like you we are get getting funds from the general ledger, and so it'll look like that. To cover the salaries. Correct. Right. And then Which right we after we finish getting that done, Mary and I are going to start working on our budgets for FY19. 20. Well, I saw you say 20 is so. It, well, we're in 18 now, so we want to have budgets for, for 19, 19. Okay. even though we didn't okay. present them during the season. We're going to start our first right. look at what do we think our budget okay. should look okay. like. Okay. Maybe different than this budget? We're going to make them a part of that. So it's so going to be like the, the school choice budget or the it'll have its own education column. budget. So that we're saying if you're only like if more you, detail. If, right, if you're only going to serve this many lunches and bringing in this many re much revenue, and your labor has to be this many service hours, then your food costs are going to be limited to this, so that we break even, and we, we budget to break it to to come out to zero. Will it happen? I don't know, but I think we need to set goals for them to follow and to track, mm -hmm. and then we'll know where we'll know a lot sooner when we're going off track when if they have a budget set for them or we might need to budget to cover some shortfall every year because that seems to be the pattern already. well and and, and again and we've talked about this our two main goals this year mm -hmm. was to lessen the loss and increase our collections from parents right. those were our goals i don't think that we will ever see waitley or Conway make a profit right. or even break even because our numbers say we should only have one person but one person can't serve no. you so we're always so going we to have that extra that into exactly. our budgets that we're always going to need to supplement potentially exactly do we need if to we supplement do, the that whole would be a miracle do we but <laughs> but can we get our sales up so that we don't have to supplement both salaries right. maybe we can only get, we could get to a point where we're only doing the part-time salary right. And that would free up our money for computers or something else. Right. But this will show that much more clearly. Exactly. So, thank you for doing that. Okay. And I can't wait for you guys to meet Mary Delusa because she is just a um, a bundle. She is I call her Tigger. She is just so optimistic and she's got lots of ideas and she's so excited to be working with all the schools and okay. and and she's an amazing young woman and I can't wait for you guys to meet her. She has a very nice way about her. The employees are thrilled, the other principals are thrilled. We meet every couple of weeks on a Monday, which is something that never happened before, you know, so okay. we're really in good communication about it, all the details. It's been great. I get a lot of emails from her. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll move on to new business. Um, I'm not sure who's going to take us through the policy discussion. Is that Lynn or is that? We can. Um, there's there's a there's there's, there's the like. Policies. Policies. May I look at that? For sure. A yeah. So these policies, we actually in the pol actually I'll let you do it. You're on the policy committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we worked on those and we just. These are You're just previewing so, now, essentially, for any comment right. that people might have. If you see update language, it's just basically if you if you printed them, mm -hmm. I have them all here, but there, but on some of them it's just. You should be able to see the strikeouts and the the writing yeah. in red. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the writing in red is what we've added. The strikes strikeouts are what we've taken out. So there's some of them are very simple. Some of them are a little bit more, but it took us, unfortunately, when we started doing the policies, next thing you know, it, MASC is trying to put some more on us before we have what we right, have done. because you just did them, like, a year In 2016. Ago, right? yeah, yeah, we they did. Done, but there's about 100 that need to be updated. Mm -hmm. and, the more, and then there's other things that we need to look at from a, from a district perspective, from all schools, um, IT, uh, acceptable use policy being one. Mm -hmm. um, there's another couple of ones, that, well, she says 11 from the yeah. health. Yeah. And um, so we're talking about different things like that as well as uh, what MASC wants us to do. So I think it's it'll be a continual um, subcommittee mm -hmm. but right now we're meeting very intensely like at least once every two weeks to get a handful done but they have to have a first read 
for you folks. You have to read them now. We have to present them in public meeting to you and then so that you would be knowledgeable enough to vote on them. And so what we said at the other meetings, if you have a question about them, uh, you can send it to all of us. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to deliberate all and answer. This, this committee? This committee. This committee. Yeah. Yeah. We may not be able to certainly deliberate because it would be open meeting. However, that would be a question to present and then when we vote on them in our small committees mm -hmm. in April, those questions can come up. Or we might bring the, the questions from everybody and present it at the joint meeting. And then when you go back, so the discussion would be with all 24 members, and then when you go back, you vote on them in your own committee. So just remind me, the policies are for every school. They're consistent. That was one of the K-12 things that um, your predecessor did, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So now, but each school has to approve them separately. That's what we found out at the last mm -hmm. joint meeting when we talked about the food service director. Okay. And there's a subcommittee. Bob is our representative on that subcommittee. Yep. And we showed up the other night, me and Mary Raymond, and we needed, we had three more, and one, we needed three for a quorum, and no one showed up, so. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. we sat there for half an hour waiting for somebody else, hopefully, to show up, and oh, wow. so that hurt us by, you know, an hour yeah. and a half that we usually get. We get quite a bit done in an hour and a half, so. Okay. But you could tell there's, uh, there's four new policies here, um, things that MASC is, uh, recommending for new policies. Um, we went through them. There's some language on some up update language you read through. And they'll tell you when you look at them, if you look at them online, they're in, you know, they're highlighted in red. Okay. So you can look at them on your computer if you want. I printed them. I could tell. So I take a yellow heart mark, a marker and I just highlighted mine. Update, updates are in red. Yeah. They'll cross out something and then the updates would be in red. Yeah. My, my printer printed colors. So. Yeah. Oh, yours is color. Yeah. yeah. So you can see everything new and red. Um, and then we had um, uh, amendments to existing policies for policy uh, for uh, personnel policies and procedures. We wanted to something that's been wanting to be done for probably three three or four years. I'll, I would say is longevity for non-union personnel. Right now. We have steps for non-union personnel up to 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So what it is is basically they reach different increments. They get a stipend for as longevity like you would get for union personnel up to until a certain amount. So we have a lot, I don't like to say a lot, there's a few people in our district. So we added a 25, a 30, and a 40 year stipend for people who've been here 25, 30, or 40 years. Mm -hmm. And it basically falls on the $250, if I remember right, the $250 mark on those three segments. And it, it's it been needed for a long time. Um, so that's new. That's, that's, that's something we change in long time. There's other things in the personnel, non-union personnel uh, folder that we would like, like to try to do, but uh, Dr. Carey, and I think the committee suggested that we have another subcommittee maybe in the fall that we can go over the, all the other procedures like vacation time and stuff and, and try to get it on the same line as everybody else that's deserves, you know, has vacation time mm -hmm. and sick time and buyback and, and, and all that. May I, may I make a suggestion as someone who may, have, who may be needing to replace a, um, a person soon, we need to make that competitive. If we want to be able to attract people to our district, I'm gonna be having someone retire here probably since after 30 years. I wanna to wanna to bring someone in experienced. If I can only offer them one week vacation, they're gonna say bye-bye. Because that, I've got right? three weeks, I've got three week. weeks where I am. Why would I come here for one week? It, right. the, we, it, it has to be competitive. But my question with that was, one of, that was one of my questions. The school vacation weeks, do those people get that? No, come? we work. We work 260 days of the year, um, and we. Some people like to take the school vacation off, but if that's a payroll week, we can't. We non-union people. The, the non-union people cannot. Unless you're right. specific. 
specifically a like nine month employee or something? We've only got 12, we have four 12 months in my, in my in your area. Right? I have four 12 month, 260 day, and their, their, their vacations are around their deadlines. Hmm. And, and, and until I got here, and learned how to be the backup payroll, then they always had to do it on payroll, which I don't think that is fair. I, I, I just don't think that that's fair that you're always locked in. And one woman wanted to take a two week vacation. So for the first time in many, many years, she was able this year to take a two week vacation because I know how to back her up in payroll now. So she took a two week vacation and loved it. And I did the payroll, which is good to have someone else look do the payroll because it gives me a bird's eye view you know does everything look good does everything look yeah. kosher it's sort of like you know bank bank employees are required to take two weeks yeah. off because that would be the given time that if they were they something monkey business it. going on so i think it's, it's a good process but if we if we give our give benefits to the point where we're not marketable and no one wants to come to work for us that's going to be problematic for nine for the yeah. non-union positions yeah. so that's a still a to do though yeah, that's a to-do that we're talking about, yes. It would be, um, you know, that would be a time, um, it would have a timeline that that wouldn't be wide open, like say the policy. You know, once we finish with the work that we've set out for ourselves this year, mm -hmm. then the policy committee would might meet every three, four months just to, to talk, check in on things. things. Right. But th that one would be done before budget season next year. Because that has budgetary impact, potentially. It may, yes. And this one has budgetary impact. Yep. So yep. That's it would not be large. Yeah, it's not large. It, but it's, it's just like anybody else who, if somebody decides to retire here or a frontier, they have money coming to them. So in the line item for longevity, the, some years we take, if you look at, um, sometimes you'll see, oh, we took out 17,500 out of frontier, but next year somebody's gonna retire, they're gonna need three of them, so we're gonna have to add in 17,500 times three as longevity. Mm -hmm. So it's just like this longevity, which is very minute, we would have to have a line, line item for longevity for whatever school it would be in, correct? And, and the, the thing I want to talk about longevity, this isn't, new, um, this isn't a new problem with Dr. Carey being here. This was a problem when, when um, Regina was here. This was a problem when, when Marty was here. And when Marty was here, I, I helped her, um, I, I tried to help her. The secretaries, the non-union secretaries keep telling us, we need raises. They get the raises, but they, I've been here 40 years. And we tried to explain to them that you can be here 40 years, but a position is only worth so much money. Right. So, and unfortunately, they took that to mean that we didn't feel that they were worth the money. Where my point was, you can be here 40 years, it doesn't mean you're going to make the same amount of money as the principal. And what you really should be rewarded for is longevity. Mm -hmm. That's what you're. That's what you're asking. You're asking to be rewarded for being a 40-year employee, because what what happens is if we adjust the rates of the secretaries at the high school, then the central office wants sees that, and they want their their rates adjusted, and it just makes this whole trickle up or trickle down effect. Right. Where so if we make this a longevity issue, then everybody gets the same benefit when they achieve that longevity. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And saves us headaches of trying to say, you know, well, this one got a raise because of this, and this one got a raise because of that. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's a good plan. Unfortunately, the non-union people are a group that are by themselves, where everybody else is unionized now. So at one time, not everybody was unionized. So there was more non-union people than probably union people, if you count all the IAs. Or you know that are uh, are are unionized now. So the non-union uh, procedure and policy manual also has different classifications. So the, the library assistant is different than the custodian, which is different than the bookkeeper mm -hmm. account account. And that's person, just the frontier. Just different than the so secretary. So frontier has that. Deerfield has a, has that, but Sunderland and Waitley don't. Mm -hmm. So we, we just need so to, work to clean, 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 yeah, clean it up and make sure it's uniform. I mean, that's... Yeah. And I mean, if we're, and it, it, it would be really helpful, like, if, if, if our goal is to try to be moving in the direction 
of being the most efficient even though we're a union and not yet a regional it would help us if we all had the same salary schedule so that if we did need to move a custodian <laughs> I agree. I think that we should be able to move staff around more easily. And we can't because, like I said, Sunderland and Whitley don't have salary schedules, but Deerfield and Frontier do. Mm -hmm. And and Conway doesn't either. Mm -hmm. So so it's like if we go to move somebody, they have to change total employers, which I understand right now. But if it was the same salary schedule, if we could adopt the same salary schedule for the same jobs, it would at least make that piece a little bit easier. So that, you know, if we move somebody, they don't get a raise just because they went to the school because you might not be getting moved because you're doing great. <laughs> right. But yet that one has a salary schedule which says you get a raise. <laughs> right. I see. Okay. So did you have any questions? Questions on them? Um, were we going to go through them all or no? I no. don't think. Um, we don't. We could, but if you read them and, and have your questions, we can actually ask those questions at the joint meeting so that everybody can share in that um, discussion, uh, unless you'd like to read them um, all. If you've got something that's simple and you want to ask questions, you, I see you got little notes, you can ask well, us. Some, some of it's just that, because I don't understand. Um, I don't wonder if I should ask <coughs> Like outside the meeting, not to waste people's time in the meeting. Like maybe make a maybe yeah. make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with Dr. Gary. Yeah, if it's yeah, clarification, I can I can help. You know, I can certainly answer that. Just deliberation um, on whether or not you think it should change. But I can certainly clarify. Right, anything. Like if there's things that you're questioning in terms of. But you know what, Dr. Kerry, that's not a bad idea. If you tell all the school committee members to submit questions, and then you you could develop a frequently yeah. asked question about the policies to present right. in April without deliberating. Right. So that we all hear the same answers. So um, this is not questioning the policy. I just had some. There's the, the new policy on the bus driver examination and training, mm -hmm. and. These things that it says we're supposed to have on record, do we already have them? And this is just creating mm -hmm. a policy and we have a criminal offender record and their um, driving record. And they're fingerprinted. Yeah, and, and yeah. They're, they're medical. They get signed off by a physician as well. Okay. Yeah, Lenny, Lenny our bus driver, has them. All of this. Yes, yeah. he keep the information, yeah. or do we keep the? He does. He keeps right. the medical. We get the fingerprints. We, we get the, the background. Yes, mm -hmm. but Every we would year. rather not have their medicals. He, we just need a, a letter that everyone's medical has been performed. Right. Right. But we do get the Corey and fingerprint check every year. Mm -hmm. um, who pays for that? They. Who pays for the Corys? Fingerprinting. The, the the employee. Okay. That has to. Okay. But it is tax deductible for all. <laughs> it is, huh? Wow. I'll just ask a couple of things. Um, the meal charge policy that's new, uh, I have a question. It's with the wording. It says in the second paragraph, the school committee will provide a regular meal to students who forget or lose their lunch money. Should it say school committee? Cause, or is that just because the school committee isn't making the meals? It's your policy, though, that we will feed children regardless okay. if they have or money or we'll not. Pay the it just sounded to weird to me. Meal, basically, mm -hmm. it just sounded strange. The language, yeah, yeah, the language, and um, you're authorizing us to feed right. the children. Yeah, well, I understand that's that. what it means. I was just the wording seemed kind of strange, and then um, it, the student handbook. I did we have a student handbook? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And is it with all that stuff we get at the beginning of the school year? It's online. It's on our website. Oh. <coughs> we distribute it on paper. Okay. Well, I know we get all those things yeah, at the, the beginning, beginning of the year. year. That I think it is part of the beginning. Is it in the package sometime, too? Yeah, it may be. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it definitely could have been on our website. And I know it's a long way off, Maureen, but when the kids get to Frontier, we actually give them a planner, and the, and the, and the handbook is right in the planner. <laughs> I didn't know if that was just a frontier thing, but um, oh, in this one, the Union Thirty Eight School District Personnel Policy. That's what we're talking um, about. Yes, in the table. Of this is just a picky little thing. Yeah. Um, table of contents. The last thing that says summary of employee benefits. 
everywhere that that's referenced in here and at the end where that section is, it's called description of benefits. It's just a picky little thing. It's okay, instead of summary? Yeah. All right. Well, that's certainly <laughs> something our subcommittee used to do that kind of stuff in my no, job. No, you know, consistency, and that's <laughs> why having all the different eyes on it, but that's definitely something that that subcommittee could do. This is a document that has been, it's probably old as the hills, but I do think it was updated somewhere around 11, 12. If you look on the back page, perhaps? Nope. Yeah. Uh, December 1st, 14. 2014. Yeah. That's when it was adopted. So, and these changes weren't really, um, you know, they modified it or they, they, you know, they resubmitted it the same way we're doing it now, too. We're updating it for 2018. Um, but these documents are living documents. They, they need to be looked mm -hmm. at and reassessed Reviewed. on a regular basis. So I have a question about how these pertain to the non-union staff or all staff? Non -union. Just non-union. So are there any non-union staff on the committee? Are they involved in reviewing these policies and or? No, it's just your school providing input, so it's just the school committee? Yeah. yeah. If there's a subcommittee, may or may not be um, a, because uh, this isn't a negotiation, because if they're not, it's not collective bargaining, mm -hmm. but there may or may not be somebody representing that group right. in the subcommittee. But um, it's a little bit different than a union um, I'm just thinking like at where I work, they would have representatives of the people who yeah. the policies pertain to mm -hmm. as a voice and as a way to kind of verify that this makes sense, even though they don't necessarily have a vote on what the policy is, but as a way to get buy-in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know if we have an opportunity to have them review them too, to make sure there aren't any good hearings or anything. I'm not saying there are, but it's just a good practice. Definitely, the collaboration the is, is important, right? So that people are you know just you know, validated too for the work, that right? And to let them know that I don't know if they know that these are being done, this work is being done, so they can appreciate that too. Sounds like it's going to improve things for some of them. Yeah, I think overall, the changes in the wording for the existing policies was clear, it was more yeah. direct, you know, it didn't need all the extra. The, um, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees recommended these due to changes in the law. As you know, every year they pass this bill, that bill, the laws change, the requirements change, the expectations change. So to make sure that we're right on the edge so that if there were any kind of problem or any kind of litigation or whatever, we are following the most up-to-date policy and the so most up-to-date laws. Mm -hmm. So it, it is important work, so yeah. So I have a stupid question. Um, at will employee, does that mean non-union? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so are we done with policies? So next, we'll, the plan is to vote on those at the next meeting, the joint meeting. Yeah. Okay. In our individual Right. We'll so we'll vote on yeah. individually. We can discuss them together in general. Yeah. Everybody, like you know, so like what what if Maureen's got questions, somebody from Conway may have the same question, and then but then so we can discuss at the joint meeting. But just like we did with the as you, Dr. Kerry was saying, with the food service director, we'll take the actual votes in the in the individual meetings. So we'll have a reading in the full committee. So we'll say this one and we're changing it with these words, and then does anyone have any questions? Is that clear? Okay, and then we'll do the other one. The other one. And I'm sure people will have questions. We can't get through, you know, even when we're sitting at the table, we go through. She was saying it was gonna be a long meeting and said bring cookies. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can bring up each other. Does anybody have any questions about it? If they have questions, then we should probably read it. If no one's got questions about GB or whatever the policy is, but then we could probably move. So the idea of the yeah. subcommittee is we go through it, right. we spend the time, the and we you know, do the focus and the due diligence. Like after every meeting, I have homework that mm -hmm. I have to find out some information and bring it back to the committee to say, this is what I learned. So that we are recommending to the committee that they vote for it. and. Uh, you know, with that sense that the due diligence 
pretty much has been done by the subcommittee. So hopefully it, it might go more quickly than than it does in the subcommittee. <laughs> okay. If people show up. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, I think we're done with the policy discussion. Um, review of the early childhood tuition rates. We sent those to you. You sent them to me. Did we share them with everybody? Well, I, I, can talk, I can talk about them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This okay. came, I think, before the last meeting. Or at the end of the, after the last meeting. Right. right. So our, our daily rate for the 830 to 3 portion is 3850 a day. And then for them to say the extended day, 3 to 530, is $15, an extra $15 a day. Um, and then the sliding scale works depending on the number of people in your family and your income and that's why you'll see like when it so if, uh, if it's a family of three so two parents and one child they have to make less than forty five thousand seven hundred and seventy one dollars a year in total in order to get the, the sliding scale rate the sliding scale it's it, it's the same though for each it's fifty percent. It's the same because it because it is it, it's fifty percent and it it uh, of the tuition and the tuition is thirty eight fifty a day plus fifteen for extended day. So they get a fifty percent discount. I just assumed it was like, you know, prorated or whatever, depending on which category. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's and this is from the e ECC right. It's yeah. the, this is from the ECC website. So that's not really a sliding scale. That's yeah. Discounted rates. Right. Well, they call it a sliding scale. That's what they call it. Yeah. So this is sliding, I guess. <laughs> when you qualify. <laughs> okay. And this is the first year they had it all standardized. Was the other good? Yes, it's the same. And all four school elementary schools same. are paying the same amounts. Was that different before? Mm -hmm. Each school had their own. Well, program. some of them didn't have they extended didn't have full day, day and or some didn't have extended day. Does all of them have extended days, days now? Some, yeah. some of the half days were the same amount of time. Exactly. Okay. So, and, and remember, special education students come free because we, as a district, um, we, we are obligated to provide For a full services. day they come free? It yeah. depends. It depends on their IEP. If their IEP says 10 hours per week, they get 10 free hours. If they stay after those 10 hours, then they have to pay. And that's what, two years, nine months? Yes. To the age of 22. Yeah. Oh. It's still very reasonable prices, I think, for the preschool, which is good oh, for people yeah. to know. I, they're not publicized, so people don't know necessarily. I think you have to ask for the rates, right? Yes, and Rhonda send, then will send you a full package of information. We have waiting lists, Katie, so yeah. people we don't need know. Any more people on we don't need to spend any money on advertising because people know we're here and they know we're good. Okay. Yeah, if we lived in Boston. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should all be moving out here. Preschool would be preschool. Crazy. I mean, it, it, it's to the point, I, I, I mean, I, see, I, I, I do some people's taxes and it's like, they can't wait to get to the kids to kindergarten because they spend so much money yeah. that you know getting them to public school kindergarten saves them so much money for child care. Yeah, summer goals. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we'll move on then. No votes are needed. We'll move on to the the new standing report, the capital projects, which Pete has offered to Sounds provide. good. I'll give you a second to find the one I put in front of you, and we'll do that. And if you want, we can roll right into the principal's okay. report after that. So what you'll notice, first of all, in your package is that you have, um, let's do number two first, because okay. you have an addendum here. So why don't you take a look at the addendum on your, on your, in your packet, because that'll give you an idea of where some of this information is coming from. So uh, when it comes to the sprinkler system update, certainly there's still a lot of information to be gathered, but um, I'll walk you through what I, what I have here. I, I consulted with Brian Domina, because he got the, the report came to him from this latest company, uh, who is called Industrial Technical Services, and what they did is they put a scope into our system, okay? So they ran a camera through the, all the pipes that they could possibly look at, mm -hmm. and um, they completed that, that inspection, and what you're holding is, is the preliminary report, and it's just check boxes, as you can see. It's not a narrative, but if you look at it and you read some of the narrative, for example, right on page one, it says, while there was some sediment found along with a few areas that should be flushed, 
It does not look as though all piping would need to be replaced. We suggest changing out several of the pitted pipes and flushing the called out areas along with changing out about a dozen of the couplings uh, for the newer tri-seal couplings that uh, will not protrude into the flow of water, causing some of the pooling showed in the video. So they give you some, some sense of what they saw in this, um, in this scope project that they did. So it's a preliminary report that's being shared with you tonight. The next step is going to be for ITS to give us a, a more clear sense of the scope of work based on their recommendations of what needs to be completed. Um, and as I said, uh, they are recommending that the system at the very least need to be flushed with some limited replacement of pipes, gaskets, and seals. Um, but it appears at this point that an entire replacement of the system is not necessary. Uh, although, again, you know, I, I'm, I want to just caution that that could change, certainly. Um, and we still need to have all of the sprinkler heads replaced because our sprinkler heads failed and they've just outdated and they, they need to be replaced. And then, of course, um, the work still needs to be done to identify who the contractor would be for that, um, uh, you know, for, and get cost proposals, and then uh, proceed. And the, we need the committee that's been working on this needs to act fairly quickly because obviously we want that warrant on the annual town meeting when the time comes around. So, mm -hmm. um, and Brian, uh, Brian and I agreed that it probably didn't make a lot of sense for him to come tonight, but certainly he's offered his time to come to your next meeting or uh, to meet with the school committee at some point, you know, for more of an update. Well, you know, what I find interesting here at the one meeting that I went to is that they were, the, the main concern is that they were seeing so much sludge in Not these the pipes, and yet, Alternative, they, they've got no significant foreign material observed, no. No tubercules or slime observed, no. I think, um, I no think, significant foreign material observed, no. I think those are double negative questions, Patty, that's why. In other words, if it says... So they're saying, they're, that means says, there is? no foreign material, <laughs> right. It should be exactly. a yes. You want to be a yes. Exactly right. Okay. Well, no, tubercule, no tuberculosis or slime observed. If it said yes, then you would not have seen any. I think the fact that it says no means that there is. That's a stupid way to do it. I, <laughs> it I mean, seems, ours that, seems that way. Our, we have a system, I guess, something like this, and once in a while when the, when the people come who check on it, they flush the system, and it's, it's outside. And that's where the pipe is outside for the overflow, and it just... Mm -hmm. A lot of water comes out of it, and then they bring the, the compressor comes back on to mm -hmm. push everything out. And then all your low places, we take a bucket and we yeah, they we, check out. I mean, we have, a similar, we have a similar system here, Bob, with the low point, yeah. um, with the low point discharge. But but this system has never been like super flushed, and it, and they're suggesting that that's a place to start. Yeah. And then we've also heard from some of the companies or their engineers that once that's done and, and, and certain pipes, you know, that are already corroded have been removed, that then there's some sort of a, I want to say it's nitrogen, although I could be wrong, but there's a, there's a nitrogen injection or something that, because these are, it's a dry system, so there's no water flowing through those sprinkler pipes on a regular basis, so they fill the pipes with nitrogen, which further inhibits corrosion. And that's cool. something we've never done before either. So that's that might nice. be all part of the process. But anyway, that's where we're so at. So that's with good that news. Particular it sounds like sounds we're like just waiting news. though on the it's kind of be expensive line. one way or another, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But it's it sounds like good news. It's not they're not saying, yeah, this system is, you know, you probably you just have to tear system, it down and start yeah. over. Um, now they won't fix it, they just do the report. IPS, I don't I don't know um, if they are also a you know, this particular company. I think I think that Brian tried to be careful to hire, you know, uh, maybe a company that had that no vested be. interest. Yeah. You know, and, and, but I'm, I can't say that for certain. But either way, it's probably going to be a big enough expense where it's going to go out to bid. So folks will have, folks, you know, we'll be getting proposals from more than one company. And who does that? Is Brian going to do the bidding? Brian's been, you know? yeah, I, I don't, again, I can't speak for him, but I know that Bob, probably he and Bob together will discuss, you know, who the companies are that they want to invite to bid, others who may bid. Um, I suppose the two of them, I might say, are taking the lead on this. So that's one, one of the capital projects. Okay. The other is the phone system. And again, I consulted with Scott Paul, our mm -hmm. IT director, because he is very much in charge of that project. Um, and here's the notes. I'll just read through them and see if I can't annotate them a little bit further. So all end user phone equipment is on order and being shipped. That's the end result of us having looked at, I think, three different types of telephones that mm -hmm. 
that you know Mary also looked at from our main office and you know tried and they, they had them. I mean these guys do a great job. They had it all set up at central office, plugs you know phones plugged in and actually working so to speak so that we could test different parts of the system and see if we liked them, how well it worked. And so that part's been done and phone equipment is on order and being shipped now. We've made a decision. Crocker was selected as the telephony service provider following successful testing that we did with Crocker back in February. And the final voice over internet, voice over internet protocol circuit that will connect Waitley to Crocker, uh, and that's for external calling capabilities, is expected to be installed by March 16th. That's this Friday, for those of us who can't believe how fast time has gone by. Um, the network cabling for the phone devices was installed. We had a gentleman in here, um, Bruce Weston, for a couple of weeks who ran wires throughout the whole building. And if you look in, probably behind me too, but in every classroom now, there are there are lines leading into every classroom where these phones are going to go. So that's a big step uh, that's been already accomplished. Um, let's see here. The initial network setup. So the private bank exchange configuration <laughs> and firewall configurations, that's still underway, but also expected to be completed by, this, by the end of this week. And that's work that's happening in-house. I think I've mentioned to this committee before that the IT staff is taking on a lot of this work because it's more cost effective. And once that private bank exchange is configured to meet the school requirements and tested, then they'll schedule a cutover of our system and our phone numbers to the new service and the new private bank exchange. And the exact date is to be determined, but we're looking at mid-April as an estimate. And hey, we got our own bank now. I know. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me I, I, and I just want to leave one little piece that isn't addressed here um, that I had to work out with uh, the town. So next, NEX Vortex becomes like our T-Mobile, okay? So we have to pay for a certain amount of minutes every month. Mm -hmm. They only take a credit, credit card. card. Yeah, we talked about that. So we, I spoke with Lynn and the town has a credit card, but with the warrant process, they're never gonna pay it on time and then they would incur charges. So Scott had initially given them the American Express for Frontier Regional. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it on that. Mm -hmm. And then I will create an invoice every month from the, uh, from the Frontier Bill that will go on the Waitley warrant so that the town of Waitley will then pay back Frontier for what they're using the American Express charges for. Can we eventually that seems change that? that? It, so it's going to have to. Yeah. And one of the ideas that Lynn had is that you guys would sign off for a year's worth of phone usage. Uh -huh. And we used to do this in Deerfield. You would sign a warrant for one year so she wouldn't have to wait every month. So when the bill came in, she knew she had the amount, she could pay it, and then she would just report it to us. And then we put it in our system as a non-check charge. Mm -hmm. She would send it to us and we would put it that way it was paid. And I think we eventually have to do that because Right now, the only reason that um, that we can we're, that we can do this with um, Frontier is because we're still waiting for the law to decide whether or not we can have one committee person do a report. So right now, we we can do it at Frontier, but eventually Frontier is going to run into the same issue where we're going to need to have the approval before the checks cut. So this is a temporary solution for the American Express card. Correct. Okay. And, um, um, so there's not new numbers or anything. This is all just new equipment. Nope, it there will, will be, be the same phone numbers. The, fo the main, all the main phone numbers are going to remain the same. Uh -huh. um, and there are more than than most people know because I mean I think there's one for like the kitchen office that's always been in existence. Or the nurse. Purveyors use it. The nurse has one that pretty much parents a lot of parents know. There's yeah. there's two main lines. There's even I think going to be a remaining analog phone with a phone line. Should should the whole you know computer system break okay. down? Uh, I think they've thought ahead to even including one line. We have what's that going at, to the, be different. at the central office as yeah. well. Yeah, what's, we get power goes down. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different is that every classroom is going to have a phone with a, an extension, so you can dial you know the extension and get mm -hmm. to your classroom teacher and leave a message. Um, uh, and we're going to add lines in places where we think we need them for safety. So for example, uh, down in the basement, there's no phone, but that is where custodians do their paperwork sometimes. That's, you know, a place where, 
you know, in the event of an emergency where somebody might find themselves and it'd be nice to have a phone, especially in a basement where your cell phone may not work. There's probably going to be, not probably, we're gonna add a phone in the, uh, in the equipment closet uh, in the gym. One more reason why we have to really protect that room from, you know, just adults going in there and not letting kids get in there, especially mm -hmm. during recreation time. Um, when the recreation department is using it, but there'll be a phone in there again in case of emergency. So th those are going to be the big changes is that teachers will have more access to their uh, personal, you know, parents can leave voicemails for teachers, they can call out from their room. And I want to point out that, because um, there's one more item here before I move to the principal's report, if you'll allow me to just go from one to the next, but mm -hmm. um, that the intercom system is going to be through these new phones, right? So right now we have we have these yellow bogan phones on the walls in most classrooms that are going to become obsolete. Those are going to be removed. Mm -hmm. And right now, those are the only phones that connect to the intercom system, that go, the speaker system that goes throughout the building. And so the phones are going to provide that function, and they'll be connected to the speakers throughout the building. So we can do all calls and or call a classroom through the phone. So, so the speakers will still be valuable because we'll, we can do an all call and do our morning announcements. But if we wanted to call all classrooms, that would come through the speaker and the phone. Or if I just wanted to call Mr. Hollis classroom, for example, I could, I could intercom him through his phone. So mm -hmm. it's really going to be much more user friendly for a lot of, for a lot of possibilities. But I also wanted to point out one other piece of this, and I didn't, I didn't copy this for you because I have some notes on this one and I couldn't find a blank one, but, but this is, this is, it looks familiar, it's our five-year plan. Yeah. And if you look at it, um, this, this, this little yellow line, there's only four things highlighted on this page. And this one here is the air conditioning for the IT server closet. That's already been done. And we can scratch that off the list. The first one is upgrade the phone system. Once we've done that, that's off the list. And then immediately following the finish of this phone system, mid to late April, as Scott said, we're going to start working on the clock upgrade. And this also says intercom upgrade, but it, that's all tied together. So really, by the end of the school year, everything in that first column should be complete. Okay. And then this committee can talk about what the next That's priority nice. should be. And Katie, yeah. I'm, I was thinking about that because you also asked me about possibly what we might look at at the end of this year if there's money in the budget. And I, I certainly can't answer that question on my own or, 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 or indicate what it should be. Partly it's based on how much you know, money we may mm -hmm. have to spend. But I can say that there's a lot on this list that ranges from very big projects to, mm -hmm. to some smaller projects. For example, on the smaller end, um, we have some bathroom floor drains that, that appear to have, at some point in our history, possibly been intentionally clogged, you know, intentionally filled. Um, I, I suppose that the reason, I'm not, I'm not a custodial engineer, but I suppose that the idea behind having those floor drains is First of all, if there's a flood, you know, that's a place for water to go. But, but theoretically, if you are mopping a floor with a lot of water, the water goes in there. And just like your sink or your toilet, it stays in the elbow and it keeps um, fumes from rising out of that from the septic system. If you don't use a lot of water when you mop, those tubes dry up and then odors come into the building. There may have been a time, and I'm not suggesting that it was notoriously done, but there may have been a time when it was decided to just fill those with wax or concrete or something. We've had a couple of people look at them and they can't drill through it. So, but it really is not okay that they are the way they are. So, so we, should we call our previous uh, custodian to ask, ask, to ask well, Mr. Well, Ralph if he did I'm not sure if that's the right answer, but, <laughs> but that's, a, for example, a project that's on my list that is, probably doesn't rise to the level of a capital project. We also have a lot of trees on our campus switching gears. Um, that really probably need to be looked at every couple of years by a tree company. You know, the last time they were here, obviously, we were replacing all the trees by the barn. But it wouldn't hurt this, um, you know, this coming summer to have a tree company take a look at all of our trees and decide if there's some that are dying, mm -hmm. dangerous, that need to come down, particularly where areas where there are students. Um, some tree work might be something. And then, of course, at the end of last year, we agreed that we were going to try to maybe do a classroom every year and turn it over from carpet to tile. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of possibilities, but I think it depends on what our financial picture looks like at the end of the year. Do you, do you think the, um, the upgrades we have done in the classrooms from carpet to tile has seen more benefits than negatives or anything like that? I think that's a great question for some teachers who've had the change to answer. I would say that generally speaking, it's easier for the custodians to clean the floors than it is to clean the carpets. 
I think the carpets clearly build up over time. They're harder to clean the older they get. They're not as hygienic over time. Sound is an issue for the teachers. When you don't have carpets, the room is louder. Um, but every teacher that had tile installed bought at least one, if not two, large area carpets and then maybe some mats for their kids, and that helps a lot. The sound of the chairs on the tile floor is mitigated by putting some felt on the bottom of the legs, but these are all things that we've already experienced and are dealing with as, as they come up. You, know? you can use tennis balls, too. That's what they do. With, yeah, tennis remember balls. Remember, Maureen, in Catholic school, we had to bring in four yeah. tennis balls for the bottom. For, for, yeah. chair. for our <laughs> chairs. Oh. You really can't today because of latex allergies. Oh, good God. <laughs> Okay, well, it's really helpful to have an idea of what you're thinking about so that as we get towards the end of the year, then we can be thinking how many, about it. How many classrooms did we do last year? We did, we did three, and we did pre-K and kindergarten and the lobby between them, which was yeah. huge, and then we did second grade. So we did three classrooms at the end of last so year. So we still have that, that was five, more, five more classrooms possible that we could do in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, one, two, three. Yeah. Six, what was including, the including, a, what else? including at a school time Second. room in the resource room, yeah, six or seven. Yeah, I'm just, I just remember last year in kindergarten, there was a week or two where there was a lot of stomach illness and having a carpet with kids throwing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Much easier, know, with, much easier that. with top, I can see with those, where it's much easier to clean up after, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. on yeah. tile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I would, and you guys can come and would look to you to guide us on what, what the teachers are thinking and what you think are the best um, next steps on that. So for as the, we get closer to making a decision. You mean for any project, Katie? Yeah. 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 And, I, I think, and I'll consult with staff in the building, but also with Bob Lesko and you know, right. other folks, too. And everybody. Yeah. So, and, yeah. I mean, I just feel like you should be presenting what you think is best for yeah. the school sure. ahead of us yeah. deciding. Yeah, absolutely. But that's great. It's good to know if those are out there. Okay, should I go right on to the Yeah, why don't you finish your Thank you. All right, so the first item on that is a building update. Um, and I wanted to let you know that we've installed in pre-K, uh, very similar to the front door entry, we've installed a, a doorbell and a buzzer um, with, a, with a button inside the classroom so that um, people can be let in. What we haven't done is installed a monitor. There is already a camera out there. Um, but we decided it was an expense we didn't want to take on right away, that maybe we can do this summer new budget, um, but it's not necessarily a safety issue because from where the buzzer is, that if, you're, if you remember, that the pre-K door is mostly glass, so it's pretty easy to see who's out there. Part, we, want to, we want to complete the project and have a monitor that'll, that'll bring us up to what we feel is very safe, but we were already noticing that at the end of the day, when there's only a handful of kids and only one staff member in the classroom, they could be way over by the smart board. Mm -hmm. Somebody rings the bell, and now the teacher has to leave all those kids mm -hmm. and go into the foyer to let them in. Uh, at least now the teacher can cross the classroom. She can maintain visual supervision of the kids, see who's at the door from inside, press the buzzer, mm -hmm. let the parents in. Well, but the, the monitor's coming, too, at some point. With the extended day, it's probably dark at... at pick up time during the certain winter. times of the year so it's already yeah. dark outside it's lit I mean there's yeah. a light above the door but now it's but it's, now it's light it's a step in the Even right they yeah. it's light now but sometimes yeah. right before last Saturday yeah. last Saturday it was it was probably pretty dark yeah. getting dark yeah. around 5 five thirty. and quite frankly with the tinted windows um, when it gets dark out the opposite effect starts to happen you can see in better and it's harder to see out and that's not great for safety if the teacher can't really right, see who's see out that. there, <laughs> right? But that's where the monitor comes in, and and, um, and we, you know, certainly that hasn't fallen off the radar entirely. We just started the project by doing this one part, and the monitor was more expensive than what we've done to mm -hmm. add the monitor piece. So we're just going to hold off on that and get it done next. Okay. All right. That's so a great idea, though, the doorbell. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was important to have that same safety precaution that down there that we do in the front Is of our. Is there a doorbell here? In the front? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the one. Yeah. When you push, oh, oh, when there's yeah. the bell, right? Yeah, yeah. call it the doorbell. Yeah, so it's, it's the intercom system essentially. It okay. rings in the office, and then we can say who's there and come on in if we want to let them in. I've just been here on weekends, and if people can't get locked out, they have no way to contact. Oh, that people. only goes into so the it only office. goes into the office. The doorbell. That's right. It doesn't right. ring. It doesn't ring like in the yeah. hallways. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so also um, um, there were attachments to my principal's report, and mm -hmm. one is a form that should look familiar. It's the one we've been using now for a couple of years uh, in terms of anticipated school choice openings. I promised you I'd keep you up to date. So here is the update right now. Um, you can look at the chart, uh, but it might be easier to just go down to the very bottom and oh, consider... Got 13. Pardon? You got 13 new kids. Uh, applications, oh. yeah. Yeah, 13 applications so far. Yeah. Um, so yep, yeah, uh, just, to, just to give you sort of the, the coming and going and, and really in, in some detail, um, we currently have 37 school choice students. We lost five of them this year. One family moved to Brockton. Um, a brother and sister moved out when one, uh, one of the students went to a program and, and the other student followed. Mm -hmm. And then we had one more family that, that moved um, simply to um, out of state actually. One, one family moved what did I say before? I met Marlon. Yeah. One family moved to the eastern part of the state, then one family moved um, out of state. Uh, so that lowered our numbers. And then if you add to that the, the departing school choice students in sixth grade, we're looking at um, going down to 31 students before the year is over. And 13 more uh, will bring us up to 44. And the intention is to continue to advertise. The next advertisement that will go out before this month is over. Um, we've advertised our openings in the Gazette and the Reporter. We will again, the next advertisement will include um, our lottery date, which this year, I haven't picked the exact date yet, but it'll probably be during the April vacation week. Um, we'll pick a date and send out acceptance forms. If we need to do a lottery in any grade, we'll do it that week. Mm -hmm. And that's an if. We only do a lottery if we have more applications for a class than we do uh, openings. Um, but we want to get the word out soon because we do have some parents who've applied who, who want to know, you know. It's not to say that they won't come here anyway, but some parents have said to us, you know, I'd like to know when we're going to be approved. Otherwise, I may want to put out some other feelers. Um, and the converse could be true because if we have people who are applying that were maybe their second or third choice, if we force them to make the decision earlier, we'll still have time to go back out and fill them again. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it works both ways and also... You know, people people do um, do market on our behalf. We have parents that are very happy here, and they go out and they tell other parents, "Yes, I, you should absolutely accept that." Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's where we stand right now, and um, and we'll do the we'll do the um, lottery a little earlier this year than we have in the past because I think some schools do it earlier than we have in the past, and we need to bring that date up a little bit. So and then we'll we see get where we stand. Good um, uh, re um, reply to the kindergarten. Um, the idea that people that were in the preschool could choice into the yep. that where we told them that we were yep. going to give them priority. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, well, and we Patty can't give them priority. Yeah, Patty corrected that, oh. but the, those families want to come here, and, and within you know, okay. out of the six, out of the it, it's against the law. Uh, okay. <laughs> we don't want to do that. No. Mm -hmm. Out of the six that are anticipating coming into kindergarten, how many of those are in our preschool right now? <clears throat> I think we have more than six. Th those those are ch those are choice applications. Probably, uh, I would say. Uh, no, I see what you're asking me now. Yeah. So ten, the ten, the column, the first column that shows ten. Those are, um, those are all town residents who've enrolled. Okay. And um, and there's an eleventh. That's what the asterisk is. That is not sure if they're going to come to Waitley or not. Okay. Um, and then of the six, I want to say four, Bob. I could be wrong, but I think that there's four from preschool that we. So we got at least a, a couple other ones that we gave applications yeah. anyway. So, yeah. which is nice. All right, so I'll move on to the last few items here. Unless there's any questions about school choice, but I'll keep that on the agenda for next month too. I mean, the, the question that we always have, I guess, with um, with classroom sizes yeah. and stuff, and I see a couple of them would put us over that 20 mark that we try to. I mean, is, you know, the discretion could be, you know, like there's one person that has an application for sixth grade, we're already going to have 20. Do we make the decision to do 21? I would recommend absolutely yes, especially mm -hmm. if it's one of the upper grades. I do have a family that wants to bring a kindergartner and, um, and another grade yep. that would push that grade up to 21 also. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I like to see them lower in the, in the early grades, but... Um, you know, if you have 21 in so, you know, second grade, is the one we're looking at here. Yeah. If you have 21 in second grade next year, 
Um, and 21 and 6th grade, and, I mean, it's... You know, I mean, it could climb. I mean, there's a possibility that by the time that classroom gets to 6th grade, it could be 23 or 24. That's still not out of the universe right. of reasonable classroom sizes. And it would only climb if we either continue to accept choice or if we had residents moving in. Yeah. And, and just because thing. we push it to 21 this year doesn't mean we have to push it to 22 next year with choice. Right. It could go up with residents, but... And one of the so things, I think this is a good year to maybe reconsider our 20, our capital The targets. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing that, you know, uh, from the frontier perspective, most of our school choice kids come up through um, the, the acceptance in the Union 38 schools. We don't get a lot of newbies <coughs> coming in in seventh grade. They're coming mm -hmm. up. So we want to make, you know, we want to make sure that that feed is still coming because um, I don't know if you were there, if you guys had stayed for the presentation, but Frontier's getting to the point where our charter and choice is costing more money than what we're bringing in. And for every one child that goes out, Darius has to bring in four school choice. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be in that position where we have to start budgeting choice and charter tuition out. Right. Right. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to look at the target numbers. Mm -hmm. As and, we get to final, and I'm not sure how many people watched 60 Minutes last night. Who they had on first on 60 Minutes last night, but it was pretty disgusting as far as I'm concerned. I saw snippets. It was Leslie it was, Stone. It was. In, it's all about charter Eagles. schools and oh. our person. Mm. Our person who's heading our country for education is pushing for more charter and less for us people and it's it's, it's really oh my god it's, it was her disposition though just doesn't cease to amaze me because leslie is pounding oh yeah she's pounding on her. questions about her home state of michigan and how the public schools have not improved and yet you continue to take more money how do you think they're and she just sits there and smiles yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like with a big smile on her face she said no i haven't delivered any visit right? any i haven't visited schools. any Typically, <laughs> typically, I don't watch 60 Minutes. My wife says, you had to put on Channel 3. I put it on. And as soon as I saw who it was, I says, yeah. okay. And, and Leslie Stahl is just hammering her. And she kept that same little smirk. And, yeah, we got to give more to charter schools and less to the public public sector. Hmm. Well, there's a good study also in the rural school districts that is, I read about it in the newspaper or somewhere that is really talking about the struggles that the rural districts are having. And I think we're not quite rural, but we're close enough that we're, we can see what some of those struggles are. And they're making some good recommendations. I am, um, we, several superintendents and myself, we wrote a letter to uh, Boston about, um, for a charter school, uh, for Rivers Charter, because they, they really, they don't really offer anything different mm -hmm. than what we offer in, in our uh, district, and yet we're paying for students to go there. So uh, this was at the Frontier Deliberative Session, the budget hearing, rather, and they uh, said, well, you know, what about the Chinese immersion? We don't have a lot of students going there, but I said, I'll get the letter, the template, and uh, send it out to you. So I sent it out to everyone on the Frontier Committee and to the Deerfield mm -hmm. uh, Selectmen, and they put it on their um, agenda for their upcoming meeting to send out send to something. them. Because they um, refused, their, they did not honor their request for 400 more seats last year, but they keep coming they keep back. keep asking for And they'll keep coming back. And so the letter needs to go out by the 16th of March. So I have one going out, and um, there are more letters. I mean, the town, of, the town of Amherst is just devastated. Getting hammered. Oh. Yeah. Katie, there is something I, I, I announced at the other, help me with the date. It might be, uh, it's a Greenfield um, Community March College, 24th. March 24th. Uh, it's the uh, sustainability, the continued sustainability of rural school districts. Yes. It's from like 8.30 to noon. There was something tonight. Too, yes, that, was that you might want to attend. Mm -hmm. And if you want, we can get you What's that, that day? Do you remember what that date was? It's was a Saturday. Was it Saturday? Was it Saturday? It's a Saturday morning at, at GCC. Okay. Yeah. And, and yes, uh, I think Mike Bonacani had a meeting tonight. He always has meetings. When I have meetings, well, we have how many nights? Yes, you know. Well, that's it, and then, or else it'll be a Wednesday morning when I always have my meetings on Wednesdays. We're your principals, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so, we got off on a tangent yeah, so here with school choice, but maybe items. you want to finish. The last two items very quickly. The first two a little bit more in, in, involved. So I just wanted to make you aware again, like we do every year, that, um, that Terry Anderson organizes a book study group for us uh, on a yearly basis. She's been doing it for years now. I think t if Terry's been here for 10 years, she's probably been doing this for seven or eight at least, right? Yeah. So she, she, she peruses a lot of good books, picks one, shares uh, two or three with staff to see which one they might like to read. And this year, um, we're reading a book called Embarrassment and the Emotional Underlife of Learning by Thomas Newkirk. And there are 16 staff participating. That might be one of the it's biggest fabulous. we've had. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, everybody reads a book on their own, and then they, they meet outside of school one day, um, or twice, I think. Once mm -hmm. in the middle of the book and once at the end of the book, at probably Bridgeside or something like that. Oh, yeah. and, um, and, it, and it's a really, really fun and mm -hmm. exciting. And I just want to shout out to Terry and really thank mm -hmm. her for doing it, for all the people who participate in it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it takes, it, you know, it's, it's a way of doing some professional learning together that makes it a lot of fun for folks. So I just want to get Where do you get this book? Uh, Amazon or? We buy them, yeah, it depends. Okay. We just look for the best deal when it's okay. time to buy. Mm -hmm. That's a nice collaborative PD thing that you yeah. guys do together. Yeah. That's yeah. It's And it's by choice. I mean, people who don't want to do it don't have to do it. But this year, a lot of people jumped in. I think the topic of the book really engaged some folks. Um, number four, early release activities. Again, just very straightforward. I just wanted you to have a copy of what's left for the year so you can see what's coming down the road for Friday early releases uh, for the rest of this year anyway. And then lastly, um, you know, safety is always at the forefront, and I uh, just wanted to let you know that this Friday, um, State Trooper Carmichael, who, who is one of the lead guys in our in our district, who's done such a great job for, with, with us and for all of our schools, not to the exclusion of any of the other local or, or county police or other state troopers that work with us, but, um, but Jim Carmichael's been really um, very, very helpful, and he's coming back um, to our staff meeting this Friday morning, and I've given him the whole agenda so that we can talk about updates um, based on some of the craziness that's happened more recently. He, he wanted to come in and, uh, and meet with staff, so we have him coming Friday and we'll continue that conversation. That's all I've got. So I have a question about the early release. Um, I don't know if, if you guys ever look at um, the calendar of early release, but I was wondering if you would consider maybe not having them any early or mi minimizing early release in January and February just because of the snow. Um, We're having a meeting on Wednesday morning to, to discuss early release and um, any possible uh, modifications or changes or improvements based on input. Um, that's a very valid point and that's a good point. Um, is it because kids are going home early and they're better no, off? No, because we've had so many snow, snow days, days and, and then you end up having these short days, uh, but not the long days, it's right? Time learning. Yeah. yeah. So last year, um, right, if it was an early release, we'd cancel it if it was a yeah, delay. Was but then confused. parents yeah. got very confused. Yeah, so confusing. this year I said early release days are early release days. And so I see what you mean. Yeah, and who would have thought here we are in March? Right, March seems to have a lot also, but I think it's a right. good thing or to consider. Mid-December to mid-March, something where they're minimized during this. Well, I, I do, I, I agree. I, I agree. I think um, especially we have MCAS. They never changed the date on MCAS, and yet whether we have school or not, we've already lost six days of school this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and like push them on the... On the fringe. Early and late. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how that works. I know. With what and, you guys and then we use quite a few for a parent teacher conference. So there's a, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing, uh, it's an evolution of growth and learning from experience. So um, we will take that under consideration, though. And like I said, we are meeting Wednesday morning, and there will be school Wednesday morning. We will be meeting. <laughs> But uh, I, that's a great uh, request, and I'll certainly bring that up with the peers. Okay. Great, thank you, Pete, for that update. Um, Lynn, do you want to? I, I don't have any update. I don't know. I don't have anything. No. I, well, I did. I was going to talk about the budget, yeah. but we've already enjoyed that. No, 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 no collaborative no. meetings. How was the, how, Pete? How was the? Profit on the pancake breakfast was it a good turnout or 
I don't think we know. I'm not sure I've heard any of the numbers. Yeah, we're still waiting to reimburse for some of the expenses. So okay. Yeah. Do you know how many meals we made? I don't sold? know how many meals, no, but it was it was steady. Okay, good. Usually, sometimes in the past, for me, my experience, the first hour is kind of slow, but I was here then and it was steady. I heard you weren't being helpful, though. You were not going to recall the yeah. lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's so, all right. We will hold that again. Oh, thank God Andy was here because he knew. I wouldn't know where to find anything to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> Only you worry. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. Okay, so I think that's all we have for today's meeting. Thank Make you. Make a motion adjourn at seven twenty-four.